The bomb five one seven one. Listen here, I am the superior green hood here. Welcome everyone back to another video. My name is Grinchy, and well, making a hood video is going to definitely be a fun one, and I have a very fun first round to be playing in. So essentially, it's been a while since I last made one of these character videos. I make one every six thousand months, or aka when I feel like it, and. Out of every character that's been requested so far to make, I have not gotten a single person to request hood, so here I am making a hood video. Um, mainly being, it's because of that, uh, bomb guy, who is just, he, he, he enlightened me of such a great character called Green Arrow on the Hypixel Smash Brothers community. And I am having such an exhilarating time playing this very fun character, I promise. Now, this character is actually a very gimmicky character. I won't lie when I say that. Haha, uh -huh, it was I. Green Hood, who spiked you, Skull Fire. This character is just filled with so much gimmicky thingies. I, I don't even know what to explain it as. It's just. It's a weird character. Like, it has so many options, and I wish that there was, like, a feature for this character just to be able to go back on its arrows to just bring out so much more diversity in the kit. Like, it has plenty already, but just imagine being able to switch from multi to trip mine. It would be so fun. Anyways, I haven't really explained the kit any, like, at all, so let me explain it. This kit is made up of free arrows. Very simple, right? And those arrows all have a unique task to play in the overall gameplay of Green Hood. And also the passive uh, Flying Punch, best passive in the game, totally not the same. Um, anyways, let's start with the, my favorite arrow called Multi Arrow. Multi Arrow is probably the most underrated arrow of all the arrows that Green Hood has to offer. The thing that makes multi really good is the fact that it's an amazing edge guard tool. Now I need to kind of explain what I mean edge guard tool. If you're playing near the edge, like let's say Tuckins over here, he is playing close to the edge. If I can just catch him off guard with my multi shots, I can start up a wave of multi arrows, which will take practice, I do admit. It will take some practice for you to understand how it happens, but Eventually, you're just going to be slowly uh, playing at his health bar and slowly pushing him off into the void. And this is one of the highest, or it has a huge hitbox or like huge area where if you fall in, it's going to hurt. But that's besides the point. All right, take that scatter spam, my favorite. Bye, Tuckin. So yeah. <laughs> This arrow is really good for its one task of spacing yourself away from people. Because you can. No, no, bot, no. You're not getting this. Oh god. It just. It's an amazing spacing tool, and it's also an amazing tool to work with off ledge. Because if you have that tool, then you don't actually have to worry about a lot of stuff. Because it's like. You, I, I don't know, it's just overpowered in my opinion. And it's extremely fun to use. Then we talk about Scatter Arrow. Now Scatter Arrow is one of those really lame arrows. And to explain how Scatter works, I don't have to explain. You've probably seen Scatter in work. What happens is when a person uses Scatter Arrow... What? Huh? Okay. When a person uses Scatter Arrow, it splits up. Wow! It's almost like Hanzo's Scatter Arrow. Well, that arrow is actually not bad, but then people like Focus has just given it a reputation that it's really annoying and a very spammy arrow. So, I, I understand why you don't like it, but it is a very good arrow to use if you're still like starting to learn your aim, especially if you want to get better at actually aiming. Uh, you can try going for direct shots on people to scatter arrow. You can fully charge it up, and you can try to hit person with the arrow. It has the same trajectory as the gravity arrow, which is this. 
and you can just play around with it and try to get some cool snipes. But Scatter Arrow mainly works really well in corners, like let's say he follows me right here, come here. Follow me in here. Like, this arrow does so much when he's in a close range because it just, how are you going to escape it, right? So as I was mentioning in the last round, uh, Scatter is not only just good in corners, but it is very useful during ult. And the reason why I'm going to make this debate here and now that Scatter is a better arrow to use during ultimate is because simply that Tripmine gives no uh, ulti ultimate experience, or like it gives you no charge towards your ultimate, whereas, well, Scatter gives you a lot of charge. You're landing much more arrows every time you land a Scatter arrow. So, you're gonna be getting your ultimate faster from using it. It could take off around like 60 seconds if you spam fast enough. Like 60 seconds off your ultimate is just 90 seconds till your next ult. Which is not bad because if you land your shots consistently, it's gonna be like 30 seconds in between each ult if you're really good at hood. I don't know how to explain it. Hood is just a wonky character. Then we also have Beyblades in the game, which make uh, Hood Ult a little bit hard to manage, but that's okay. Now the last arrow that we're really going to talk about is the Trip Mine Arrow, and the Trip Mine Arrow is one of the weirdest and most debatable arrows in the whole green hood kit. To explain what it does, it's just a simple uh, setup arrow. You put it down, and if a person walks over it, then they blow up. Unless you have good aim and shoot him, shoot your trip mines directly into the people, then you know that's another option too. But it does a massive amount of knockback, and it also does 12 damage. Most of the time, sometimes it does 11 damage, and damage values are inconsistent. But it is what it is. So. Yeah, the trip mine arrow is just very powerful, especially if you can want to set up for a combo. You can have a trip mine land underneath a person and then set up a multi wave, which is always excess or acceptable. I guess I don't know. Trip mine is just overall a very good arrow. So trip mine and scatter were discussed last round, and we're getting some lag. So pog. But we didn't really describe the ultimate and the passive, so let's talk about the ultimate first. I guess, I don't know. The ultimate is one of those really stupid ultimates because it, although it does like theoretically trap a person in to this gravity error, I don't even know what to say. It's just overall, it's a very. This man just is bait bleeding in his own lot ring. Okay, sure. The ultimate itself does no damage, but the damage output that can come out of it is just insane. And the ultimate is just a very good overall support ultimate. Um, you can use it pretty well as a solo ultimate as well, and you're just kind of benefiting from it. But in 2v2s, if you have a Karakop teammate or just a Marauder teammate, uh, Cake Monster, whatever, the ultimate just allows a person to stay there while they watch their life fleet in front of their eyes. They can't do anything against it, and it's just such a powerful ultimate. The only thing you can really hope for is for bad ping, and then even with that, it's just like, there's a way to stop it. So you see this Botmon right here? Hey, hey, Mr. Botmon. Alright, so if we get like really close right here and like shoot the grab arrow like on the corner of the block, it's going to work out very well for you because they get trapped on there for some reason. Don't know how that works, but it does. As I was mentioning last round, uh, the grab arrow, another laggy start. Amazing. Love this game. The thing about grab arrow too is that you can kind of snipe an immediate like 80 health off a person using the arrow. And just to explain how you can do it, uh, you can predict spawn points in this game. Uh, people have not figured out how spawn points work, so I'm going to tell you all how they work right now. If let's say a person dies in this corner of the map, they're going to respawn somewhere like here. Not really, because this map's a bad example, but let's say someone dies right here in this corner. We're going to respawn right there, or right here, preferably. Um, and the reason this happens is because uh, every time you die, you're going to spawn to the closest spawn point. Or, like, not the closest spawn point, but to the opposite spawn point of where you died. 
So if you have somebody like Pixsword uh, jumping off into the stock or into the void, all three stocks, then I have an easy solution. Just read his spawn point and try to snipe him with Skullfire. It's funny to get a reaction out of him whenever you kill him because he's team griefing and it's really annoying. So, yeah, essentially just if you figure out like, okay, this pug just died, maybe he's spawning right here. So I can wait and once he gets back, I'll shoot it. Nope, I was wrong. It's just one of those things that you have to practice. Like, some maps are just really stupid, like Skyline and Apex. Those map spawn points are ridiculously stupid to work with. So you're trying to figure out where we're going to spawn next because they're so inconsistent. And Apex is just a small map, so... It's... Alright, I guess. But if you can predict spawn points, it's going to be a great time. Also, you can try to catch people in mid-air grabs because you can just laugh. Ha ha, take those scatters to the face. Grab arrow is just insane. And while we're at it, let's just talk about flying punch. Underrated ability, or underrated passive. Although it does, like, I don't know. Although it's predictable. Like, you know that they're going to be going into the direction they punch. It is actually a very good knockback move. It does like 4 damage. It deals a lot of knockback. It's a funny tool to spike with sometimes, because I think it you can spike with Flying Punch. And people don't realize that it's a good form of mobility for Hood. It's a good dodging move. And allow me to explain this. The Flying Punch ability has a little fun thing where if you time your flying punch just right you can actually completely negate knockback so yeah i would try to do it but see it's just negated knockback like th the move is kind of stupid because if you can negate knockback let's say you get trip mine and you're, the person's like oh yeah i'm gonna use this trip mine to uh send him into the air so i can do a multi combo you can just give them a gigantic middle finger by canceling their uh, trip mine's knockback and then do whatever with that. Canceling knockback would probably like just give you an opportunity to uh, make your own setup. And if the hood doesn't know about the uh, tech, then it's just amazing for you because you can abuse it. There's also another tech. I'm not really sure how to explain it, but uh, there's an instant switch tech. So I. Like, you can sh switch your arrows a lot faster, so I don't know how to activate it, I'm pretty sure you just learn it with time. Uh, you could ask Loon if, for a better description of how that works, I don't know. Maybe Creo as well, but I'm not really sure, I just accidentally do it sometimes if anything. But long story short, Hood is just gimmicky as all hell, and uh, well... There's one last thing I didn't mention in this video that I will very brief in like very little time I will mention. Essentially this character is just stupid to all sorts of extent. Uh, something you shouldn't understand are matchups for Hood. Hood can win a lot of matchups like Pug or Sanic or Spooter. Not like by a long shot, but he can hold his own. Like they all counter him, but if you set up your trip mines just right, uh, you can kind of keep them away from being able to approach too hard. And with that, you can just try to grab them, get them stuck, and then destroy them when they're immobile. That's literally your best bet for fighting characters with high mobility or high knockback. Um, Sergeant's one of those weird ones to fight where you have to be able to play around a trip mine arrow a lot. Winning a lot of matchups with Hood is very reliant on how well you use your trip mines or how well you place it. Um, also having good positioning. You don't want to just put yourself in a position where you're out of double jumps and have flying punch as your only move left over. You want to keep uh, flying punch as your uh, second. So you want to double jump, then flying punch, and then double jump one more time. So or you can like mix up that order, but as long as you have options then you'll be fine. Well, for the most part, that was it. Hood is overly, 
easy if you actually get the grasp of it. You can be a normal human being and be nice and play hood the way I did in today's video, but you could also be like our lord, focus energy and play hood in a completely different light. I am so sorry to everybody that I massacred during my Hood 1.9 scatter spree. Uh, moral of the story, please, for the love of God, don't be a scatter spammer. It is the most annoying thing in the world, but if you actually do learn to play Hood well, then I think it's actually a really cool Hood. Like, you can become like Creo one day, who is amazing at Hood. Anyways, thank you all for watching my video today, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya. Thank you.